All right, got five people in here. Welcome to an episode of Fish and Dive Live. We are here with Alan at Longfins, gonna discuss the new non-commercial fishing licenses that Hawaii might be requiring all fishermen and eventually spear fishermen to get. So um, Alan, if you wanna introduce yourself to everybody. All right, uh, aloha everyone, I'm Alan Yanko, uh, owner operator of uh, Longfins Freediving. All right. So, yeah. So basically, I guess there's a lot of uh, a lot of talk on the water about this uh, RPL, this registry permit and licensing for non-commercial fishermen here, and you know it's got a lot of people worked up, and a lot of people are some people are a lot. Of, uh, how should I say this? A lot of people are seeing the positives, and a lot of people are seeing the negatives, and a lot of people are kind of in the neutral. So let me kind of clear things up. First of all, you know, I'm not no biologist, marine biologist, or I'm not no expert in anything. So every time I'm going to say basically my opinion of what I learned through meetings um, and whatnot, and my 30 plus years of fishing and diving on Kauai, and what I've seen in my lifetime so far. So basically this registry permit and licensing is for non-commercial fishermen, mostly shoreline. And basically what the state wants to do or Division of Aquatic Resources and DLNR and Westpac Fisheries and North Fisheries, what they want to do is accumulate data. They want to find out how much fish is being caught, where it's being caught, what time of day, how much fish, and all of this information. And basically, it's just to gather information to create uh, research and to see how sustainable our recreational fishery is. That way, in the future, I believe they can make a decision if they have to implement a fishing license. So right now, from my understanding, there's talk that this permit is going to be free. And the reason why they want it to give it to us free is because they want us to submit the data. And uh, like I said, it's a good thing because, you know, we can find out how sustainable things are, but then it also could be bad because down the line, you could be paying for fishing licenses and whatnot. And, also, you know, if they give something free, you know, there's also repercussions. I personally, in my life, I like to work for everything I earn or want. I don't want anything free. Even from the state, it just doesn't feel right to sit well with me. But, you know, also, how this will affect prisoners, as of right now, it won't affect us at all. But eventually it will, once the data starts accumulating, if they go ahead with this permitting. And like I said, it could affect us by having to pay for a license. And not only that, with all the data they accumulate, you could figure out, for example, oh, this area here, a lot of people are catching fish over here. I don't think it's going to be sustainable. And then they do the research and they have marine biologists jump in the water, do some diving, do some data collecting, and they find out that the Marine life is depleted, they can shut down that whole area, which is good because they're helping that area, uh, you know, re reproduce and restock itself and whatnot. But then, if we as fishermen don't do the ethical thing by fishing ethically, we will, we will end up fishing out our waters, and then eventually the state will close these areas down, and we end up without any fishing area at all. So. It's time to take kind of a stand now to do the right thing as far as when we go fishing and uh, as far as going to these meetings and voicing your opinions, you know. Also, I went to a meeting last night with um, uh, Division of Aquatic Resources. Uh, uh, I guess I should say the head of DAR here in Hawaii. His name is uh, Don Heacock. This guy is a marine biologist and very educated, very well informed, and he explained a lot of what's going on about this RPL, and he made a lot of great points. And one of the greatest points he made that I completely jump on board with is the fact that state wants to implement an RPL is wrong. He stated what we should be implementing is a law that bans all commercial sale of inshore fish. You know, because right now what he sees is a huge influx and a huge market for uhus, 
AKA, you know, all these insured species, torpedoes, whatnot. And so he said that if you eliminate that market, you're going to see a lot of positive outcomes from it because a lot of people are going to stop selling, you know, stop overfishing, stop overnetting and whatnot. So I think that's a great idea. So the state shouldn't go ahead with this permitting and license. The state should implement a law to ban all commercial sales of insured reef fish, except, except with the exception of Akule, as well as um, Opelu, that's what he said. And he made a lot of sense with that. And just that alone, we wouldn't have to go through this whole debacle of meetings and everybody getting emotional and pissed off at these meetings. And, you know, and he made a really good point. And like OP, man, OP is a really good point. Huge black market for OP. It's just ridiculous. I you know, agree. selling OP for like, I don't know, the $25, $35 a pound. It's just like ridiculous. Some people are selling for $50 a pound. And they're all illegal size ones too, you know. So it's kind of crazy. <coughs> but also, you know, and I have to agree with him on that. But another big factor for the depletion of our marine life inshore is the illegal purseiner. For those of you not familiar with purseiners, those are the ones with the huge long nets that surround the big piles of fish. Basically, they close the top, they close the bottom of the net. And they funnel the fish into a bag where they hoist it up. Now, what happens is the purseiners are scooping two, three, four, five thousand pounds of uhu all at once. They're not discriminating any fish. They're taking everything. And that's legal. That is illegal. It's illegal, but people are doing it. People are doing it. It is illegal. That is the main reason of the depletion of marine life in our inshore waters. About six months ago, a friend of mine showed me a picture of this guy, uh, a video on Instagram of this guy kind of bragging that he came in his crew pressing this area. And there must have been at least a couple thousand pounds of uhu. Wow. I, I swear, it, it was females, males, it was, just, it was just wrong, man. It was, and it created such a controversy on the stage. And, you know, and he justified it by saying that that's his livelihood, which is illegal, which is an illegal livelihood. But, you know, it's just ridiculous. And those are the guys that the state should go after. The state shouldn't come after the recreational fishermen. You know, we're over there to catch you one or two fish going home and using it for home consumption. You know what I mean? So it's these guys who are creating the market for these reef fish. So if you're going to somehow enforce the laws and get these guys out of our waters, you definitely see a great positive impact and the restock of our fish population is it, pretty insane. But that's, to me, that's one of the big factors. And invasive species is another factor. So I'll stop in, Roy. I literally, in my 30 years, seen the Kumu population here almost gone. Almost gone. And most of it has to do with the invasive species. And, you know, a percentage of that has to do with spear fishermen and fishermen. But the way we see toals and tapas in our waters here, by the hundreds of them, thousands of them, they have a lot more to do with the depletion of Kumu, you know. It's crazy. Yeah, how many times do you shoot a Roy? I've shot a Roy a couple of times and it'll like spit out like a baby uhu or like a baby goat or something. Uh, they just devour yeah. the reefs and they're really, I mean, obviously a Roy, you can tell. I mean, they take out a lot of the native marine life. So so does a top and twelve. And I feel like there's not enough. It's It's mostly like the locals that are doing stuff to enforce it when you see all these um, diving contests and stuff. Uh, just to promote to promote eradicating all the invasives like there's really no game um, Dive tournaments anymore very rarely or at least that's just like a side pot. Everybody's putting a priority on that. So um, The locals not even the state is making it a priority to take out the invasives 
And then you have the state on the other hand that, that's wanting to do this permit stuff. I think they've kind of got it backwards, or at least it just needs to be more structured um, because you definitely make a good point with the netting and the um, invasives. <clears throat> yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. And if the state was, you know, the state is doing things backwards, and if you want to get back on track, all these illegal personators, give them an incentive and have them target for all to opt in Roy. You know, you can scoop a couple hundred pounds of toffee in one track. Yeah. Yeah, the first operation. You know, because from my understanding, there is a market for toffee to all. So why don't get these permits to be radically be evasive? On top of that, give them some kind of incentive, like kind of tax break or something, you know? Yeah. Give them a purpose. Uh, they'll be, they'll make a great attack on eliminating invasive species. Uh -huh. But right now, the law says it is illegal for any person fishing to be done in near shore waters for it, except for a pulley and opello. Uh huh. <clears throat> so the guys who are keeping and whatnot, they're the guys that are running illegal operations. Yeah. And do you it's think really do you think any of that has to do with? I know a lot of people um, tie that along with like Native Hawaiian gathering rights or you know the sovereignty. Um, stuff like that as far as as far as that goes and um, I mean obviously it doesn't hold up because it's illegal but um, well, is, is that a part of the justification other than this is my livelihood because even drug dealers can say that you know what I mean <laughs> oh, no, that's, that's, the, that's the problem you know it's, it's the law is so big so open that it's not being very specific and a lot of people get away with that stuff you know it's just ridiculous but as far as the uh, Hawaiian culture and whatnot, to me, bro, this is their island. They've been managing in their resources sustainably for hundreds of years. That's a good if point. There's, if, if there's any race of human beings in Hawaii that does it well, the Hawaiians, man. But there, you know, of course, there are some Hawaiians that blow for everybody, but the most majority, like my Hawaiian friends here, yeah, man, they, they, they sustain the resources here extremely well. They do a really good job. The way I say it, you know, this is their island, their ocean. They do whatever they want. I have no say in what they do. You know, so I, I cannot get into that topic at all. Uh huh. As far as like the laws and being a tax paying citizen and what we have to follow and whatnot, I think it's just ridiculous the state wants to implement this RPL. They should implement a law that bans all commercial sale of inshore fish. That'll help a lot. That'll eliminate a lot. So as so, far as like justification for those guys, um, you said it's it's illegal, obviously, and those guys make their money off of you know just like word of mouth, telling their friends, you know, people that buy the fish all the time. Um, what what are some methods that like you know DLNR or DAR could use to target these people or to find them? Because I know like you'll see on Facebook, Craigslist every now and then people posting their fish blatantly for sale and you don't know if it's coming from a net or, you're, or somebody illegal you know what i mean yeah so, so uh, this this uh, exact subject came up last night in our meeting as well like what can, what more can we do to enforce the law that brings justice to these guys who are basically poaching uh-huh uh as we all know dnr dar we're all they're all understaffed underfunded they don't have the manpower so Don Hecox says that the best thing we can do is we enforce the law. We keep our eyes and ears open. We can report all these big approaches. Uh -huh. And we, he said, it's extremely important to catch these guys in the act. Once you catch them in the act, they'll be able to prosecute, arrest, prosecute, and everything. So, but we can't, it cannot go on your thing. So we came up with a suggestion that, you know, DAR or DNR to come up with a task force that a cyber task force that just scrolls social media and look for all these guys illegally selling fish on social media or guys, you know, selling fish on the side of the road, peddling and whatnot. But, you know, it's, it starts with us. It starts with us, but then a lot of times too, 
you know, we know the people peddling it's going to be a hard decision, a hard pill to swallow. Yeah. Hey, I don't want to have to tell my friend, you know? Uh huh. That's where. That's one of the questions right now. So, for, real quick, everyone who's asked the questions, we're going to get to it at the end of the live stream. But I'm just going to take this one right now. So, somebody just asked, what about retaliation? Like, if you, you know somebody, you put them on blast. Um, you know what I mean? Things could escalate. But even if you just do it discreetly, or I think that's what you mean by having a task force, right? So that you can, and like, for instance, if you call 911 on a domestic violence case next door, they will never know it's you. Um, so you just, there needs to be like a hotline. The task force itself will be a task force or just monitor social media. Uh -huh. As far as, as far as the enforcement part, so we, as the people, we, the community, should always keep your eyes and ears open for these illegal activities. Uh -huh. And then, you know, DNR does have a, an app where you can anonymously, anonymously report any illegal activity. Okay. You can post pictures, and I believe you can post videos on that app, and somebody at DNR should receive them. Okay. <clears throat> so there is an app to enforce it anonymously, you know, and I know some becomes like more of an ethical thing, like, you know, you can't stab your friend in the back like that, but that's when you have to go educate your friends, like, hey, you know, I understand times are hard, you gotta do what you gotta do, but, you know, you're not gonna leave anything left, you're not gonna leave anything in the ocean for two generations to come. Mm -hmm. Then maybe your friends could work on a project together to help them get over the situation, you know, or something, you know, there's Hawaii, all of us are big we're trying to help each other out, our clients, you know? Yeah, for sure. So I believe, you know, there's always a way that we can pull through. You know, as far as the fishing goes, like back to the RPL, like we really need to like attend these meetings and, you know, let our voices be heard. Like I said, not talk to the best executives. Do away with this RPL deal and just implement a law that bans all illegal sales of inshore fish and that will solve most of our problems. We will keep our right to fish for free. <laughs> so, and we will be the eyes of the and report anything we like to You know? For sure. So. All right. Um, so. That's I, I hope I'm not making everybody mad. I'm just not my attention, you know? I'm just trying Oh, no. Every, everybody's. It looks like everybody's pretty stoked. They all, they're all agreeing. Um, some of them are asking for more information, um, what it affects. So I'm just going to go over a couple questions right now. Is this only for fishing or diving? Okay. So from my understanding, it's for fishing, right? But um, Yeah. Well, it's, I, let's take a step back, actually. So, um, so this isn't going to be a license. This is an idea of having a license. But the first step is going to be a free permit, right? So you have to apply to it. Um, and then you just get a free permit, which is going to allow you to fish. This is where it gets complicated because this is where it gets complicated because it has to be almost no information. The thing, the link I sent you the other day, when I went to that meeting and I, and I told them that page link, yeah, I was told that link is two years old yeah it's yeah so yeah, yeah. that link out of date so i don't even know don hecock doesn't even know how they want to implement this how they want to start this what route they're going to go or if they even going to give us a choice of registry permit or license or they're going to make it all through so right now if the dar over here of hawaii doesn't even know then that tells me that something real shady might be going on. <laughs> yeah. Which is so, really questionable. And why, I think the first I'm, thing is everybody's talking about, you know, obviously everyone in the, in the entire state of Hawaii understands the rail fail. It's, it's an international uh, people. It's like an international <laughs> joke. It's not even just in, in, in America. Like I've seen it all over about the mismanagement and all this stuff. So uh, the first thing a lot of people are going to say is this is a money grab from the state. Um, but a lot of people that are for the permits are saying that they're they're going to be, um, they, they said that they're going to be putting it 
um, into development, like a DLMR um, training academy that I know would be, would be beneficial, but it's going to go into a separate um, fund so that they can, you know, enforce conservation and support DAR um, and, and, and these, this specific um, bureau. So, yeah, so as far as the youth, I mean, if does decide to charge it for a license, as far as where the money goes, honestly, we really don't know if it's going to go into a special fund because the state of Hawaii doesn't necessarily run off specific special parks. Everything is put into the general fund, and then the state releases money to different departments when they need it. Uh -huh. So who could really say or know what or in a fund to be used for conservation and law enforcement exists and whatnot? See, that's the thing. There's part information about this. That's what you need to attend and find out exactly where money going to go, what special fund is there, what kind of transparency are we going to see with the future of our It's just big now, for example, about five, six years ago, I'll say about seven years ago, for a hunting license, we're paying about 25 bucks. For a hunting license? Now, for a hunting license. Now, I pay over $125. You see where I'm going with this? Yeah. What thing could happen to our fishing license to implement. So that's why it's so important. We need to go to these meetings and find out exactly what's going on and let them know exactly how we feel. Because I hardly hunt now because I don't want to. I mean, it's only once a year you pay $125, but what's it going to be next year? $200? True. You know, back, back in the day, it was 10 years ago, hunting license was. 25 bucks with the conservation staff of fun. Now you have free deer tags, goat tags, free pig tags. Now you have to pay for the goat, pay for the pig, and pay for the deer tag. Uh -huh. and, and, and that's why it's over $125. Now, imagine this hypothetically. Imagine this happening in the future. Okay? As spear fishermen, eventually, are going to tell us, okay, Oscar is to buy spear. Not only that, Oscar fishermen need, now need to buy tags for the fish you want to shoot. Imagine being a spear fisherman, being the most selective hunter underwater, promoting the most selective and most ethical way of fishing, having to pay tags for the Having to go the extra mile, and that... To me, honestly, I mean, obviously, there's, there's people that are going to be against this, but that actually sounds more dangerous than what we already are doing now. Spearfishing poses a lot of risk to people, and for to tell people, like, to give them X amount of tags, it's just another thing they have to worry about, you know what I mean, as as they're putting themselves out there. <clears throat> yeah. And so it's, there's so much involved with this RPL and so many different views of these different aspects and point of view. It's just so big and thick. Really not detailed. A couple months ago when I attended a focus group meeting about the uh -huh. uh they gave us some paperwork in terms of the RPL and whatnot, but the paperwork the paperwork said nothing about how they plan to spend the money on conservation, how they plan the money how they plan to use the money for uh Utility for law enforcement, it said nothing of that. It just said basically, we want to implement this how much we, we should charge, and it just seemed like it was all about money. Uh -huh. And everybody in the focus group, we all looked at each other, and we're like, whoa. And how long ago was this? This was about two, three months ago. Okay. And this is a really small focus group. They had one on every island. Uh -huh. And you know what's even more kicking crap about? DAR and DLNR, they sent their assistants to do the meeting. The executives themselves didn't come down. And the reason that was bad is because their assistants didn't know the answers to the questions we had. They, they purposely only made them play as middlemen. They're just the messengers. Yeah, so only the executives knew the questions we had if they were not there. Uh huh. 
So that kind of takes us off too. We're like, well, who are you? Oh, okay. Well, where's so and so? Can they be here? Like, oh, uh, um, they sent us to uh, talk to you. Like, well, how are we supposed to get the message if we can start here? So it'll just turn out to be a real, <coughs> real, like, you know, it's turn out to be kind of wild at the end, but. You know, like I'm all up for sustainability, for getting data and whatnot and research, but you know, they should have done that decades ago. Yeah, now, now they're, it's kind of like they're justifying it with that, where you said in the study group a couple months ago, it's all about, you, it sounded like it was all about money, but now it's now it's about conservation. Now it's about trying to figure out where, where the fish are coming from, what is being overfished. I mean, they have data from this, from before, like why why is Hanama Bay a sanctuary? Why can't you fish Waikiki every other year? There's other ways of, of finding this kind of data out other than Absolutely. just, you know what I mean? And like you said, I think this is like a foot in the door strategy so that they can implement more stuff like, like the hunting licenses you mentioned. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's, Hawaii's got Plus your age and politically backwards I ever been to. Like I got to like visit Nevada. I didn't get to hunt it, but I read some hunting laws and whatnot. They're pretty strict, but they're really on. They're really on their sustainability, and they do an extremely excellent job in their fishing game. Oregon does an amazing job as well. So does Washington. Alaska has been doing this since sixty and it's doing such a great job that it's sustainable commercially and recreationally and on the commercial aspect of that they supply the world with people and it's sustainable you know so one of the biggest things why they have to be do that because their money goes into the fishing game fund or a special fund they go into the general fund all that money stays in there for the fishing game. You know, and that's why they put sustainability over there. Yeah. Uh, I think um, Don Clark was referring to me, uh, I forget what state, but he was telling me when he was a biologist, he was visiting a state and the office uh, he worked for, the fishing game office he worked for, had a budget of $150 billion a year. To promote uh or enforcement, everything. 150 million a year this department had him to do all of that. What is Hawaii's but two million dollars for the whole state? You can't cover crap at two million dollars. And that's and that's the funding for, for what? Two million dollars. Two million dollars is for the people of resources or DLR. Whatever, all of that. Uh, that's a blanket. Fund. That's a blanket budget for all the all yeah, of that. Two million dollars barely covered the labor. Uh huh. So that leaves us nothing for property or law enforcement. You know, and so we all know where the rest of the money went. All went to the rail. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, yeah. But it's. It, I mean, the state has a lot to work on, and I, I think, honestly, I don't want to have to say, I don't want to get political, but I do, I do structure a lot of things in Hawaii. Yeah. We structure a lot. We want to see a positive future. But, like, going back to, you know, Don Yeekos, you get it right up. Forget about this art sale. Put in a law that bans all commercial sale of or use except for a food and You know, you do that, you eliminate a lot of problems. It's that simple. It really is. But the state is just so ridiculously backward. You probably would never do it. So for all you those that are listening and going to that meeting, tell those people running the meeting. You don't want this. They want that in commercial sale refish. You know, tell them we want laws. We don't want a license. We don't want a permit. We want better laws to enforce the You know, it's too late to do research. 
Yeah. He should have done that. <laughs> he should have done it a while ago. Yeah. So, I mean, Tony Cock, when I met him, the guy was an amazing man. He had a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge, very smart, and he's thinking extremely well for being as educated as he is. Uh, and for a pandemic, he is pretty well now. He's pretty good. But be careful because the people the beauty are going to try to talk to you in the where a lot of people, a lot of us don't understand. So don't be afraid to ask them to restate what they said. It's real confusing. You know, so. And I, and, uh, you mentioned something about, uh, I don't know exactly how it works, but something like we have a choice. Once a registry of privacy or neither or not at all. I mean, so, you know, everybody has their own opinion. I respect everybody. Uh-huh. Just go to the point that I heard. That's what I get to be experienced. But we're living in different times now. Really different than how people are. You know, it's like, I've been diving for years, for 30 years. I myself with my own eyes see the depletion of I have seen points to be over two you know and that's because of a lot of the illegal debting mm-hmm. so we have to really prioritize what should be done and I think that way we'll get ahead and actually make a really big impact here. I know I'm kind of just black. I'm not taking space art. No, this is good. I mean, this is this is um, this. The reason why I brought you on here too is because um, obviously your knowledge want it, and you do your good representation to the sport and to the hobby. And for some people, you know, like their livelihood, whether it's just going and diving for food to feed their own family. Like I'm sure you know people that have done that before in hard times. And we're living in hard times now, so this puts extra pressure on people. And you already see a lot of locals moving to the mainland, and now you take this away from them, or at least show that you don't support this, then you know it, it could backfire on the state a lot. And it kind of already is from what it sounds like. So, <clears throat> um, yeah. It's, uh, it's, uh, I mean, you know, Three local packs to move out of the state of Hawaii for three days. Three local families. Three local families move out of the state of Hawaii every day. <clears throat> because up to live, it's so hard. So hard to live in Hawaii right now. It's called, the way I see it, I, mean, I don't want to sound like a big speaker to the top, but it really sounds like Jacob. A slow implementation on the local people here in Hawaii. Everything is catered to tourists and foreign investors. I don't know how it is in Hawaii. Everything's being bought out by not only locals. That's <laughs> Hawaii either. Yeah, for sure. I um, can't even imagine if you guys go through in a long way. You know, that um, analysis showed that. You make a hundred eight grand in Oahu, you're low income. I can't even imagine that. <laughs> that's that's crazy. That's you know. So if eighty grand, if you live in Oahu, you make a hundred grand, you're considered low income. Oh my God, I'm living in poverty. Yeah, I should be homeless right now. Mm-hmm. You know. So and and like I said, they putting more of this stuff on, and it could very be very to do it to us at the other shoreline to accommodate the fishes when they go snorkeling so they see more marine life. Because you know why? A fish is more valuable alive than it is on your plate. Mm-hmm. And the state knows that. So the state knows what kind of numbers you bring in, what kind of numbers you can bring in. You know, they probably took it out. Hey, you know, our fish here be more valuable to their lives if you shut down fishing. You know, to accommodate 
So, I mean, I'm not experiencing it, but it was very healthy for the first three that you know, at this point, I'm really talking about <clears throat> so, but that's why, like, so when it comes to spirit, spirit fishing is the most ethical form of spirit in the world. Spirit fishing only consists of one percent of the part of the world, or one percent, and that's only because you get what we want. And if you do it ethically, you're only taking one or two fish home for home consumption. For sure, you know. And so I also see a lot of kids, you know, nowadays on social media where they are uh, shooting other side fish. And, you know, I've always reached out to them privately and told them, you know, hey, I found the size of the fish because they're people. It's posted, I will send them the PAR website that the reputation site is and whatnot. And, you know, I try to always try to promote ethical practices in medicine, whether it be hunting, fish, or dive. Uh-huh. And I think we all, I think if we all do a little bit, it account for a lot, and we wouldn't have to keep this state trying to any limitation. You know. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if I answered anybody's question or. I really hope I'm not kidding. <laughs> really awesome. No, people are getting a lot out of it. Um, yeah, I'm going to see if, I, if anybody has any questions right now. Fire them at us right now. I'm going to go through here and see if there's any other questions. So um, what this is, it will be fishing, right? It's not for spear fishing yet. They're looking at just fishing for now, but it could very well be spear fishing um, in the near near future if it, if it passes, right? Correct. So I, I believe so. What 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 is a process like? What what is the approval process of everything? So obviously there's these meetings which I actually want to talk about. If you guys go on um, Alan's Instagram long fins. I think he's posted the dates. I think N2K also posted it. I'm gonna try to post it on Team Fish and Dive. But um, it's what's funny is I I'm usually pretty good at searching stuff on the internet. And you can't find it anywhere on Google search on on the website um, regarding the meeting. So I don't even know where you guys even got it from. Um, I have a friend here. She's like an advocate. Uh, she's a real strong advocate for what we all believe in. And she's on our whole team here. And she works a lot with, uh, Westpac, more fisheries. So she gets all the inside scoop stuff. So, and she knows, and she knows a lot of the who who in our, Political system of what we're talking about. So she is the one that gave it a date. So, and the fact that couldn't find anything, it shows me that the state doesn't want to show any transparency, you know? It makes it seem real state. So, that's what makes it more important that we show up. But showing up, right? So, definitely keep the dates in mind. So after this, um, is there any other like provisional stuff that needs to needs to happen, or is this just just kind of getting an opinion before they go forward with anything else? Um, we we really don't know, and we have to ask these questions at the meeting. Like I, I don't know either, and we discussed some of this last night, and even uh, Don Hickok, he doesn't really know. So that's why Don Hickok, like I said, is the head of the, the, our office here and for him to not have that information, he felt kind of fishy. Yeah, you know? for sure. No pun intended, but yeah, so kind of fishy. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, so um, guys, any other questions? Um, let me see. There's a lot of people having discussions on here um, as far as obviously like the money, if it's a money grab, um let me see retaliation all that stuff so for sure i mean i I feel like it's this is the wrong way to go about it but um the state kind of already got the ball rolling on it so i think they're just gonna they're just trying to see what they can get (laughs) yeah Um, Uh, 
So are these meetings, are they sending their um, associates, like their um, middlemen to these meetings to, to hear everybody? Because I, I've been to like um, meetings like this before in regards to like other things with school and stuff, but um, is it along those lines where there's actually gonna be officials there? Unlike your, um, like, like you said before in the study group? Yeah, uh, honestly, I have no idea, like you said, I couldn't find any information either. And the information that I found that I sent you was from my friend. She had that link and she sent it to me. And, and that was the only information I could find for that And that information is two years old already. You know? uh -huh. So who knows the revised plan? It could be worse, it could be better. Nobody knows. Yeah. It's scary. It's scary. It, it is. is. It really is. And um, for them to say like they like if, if it's gonna be so beneficial, why not why not let everybody know when the meetings are? Why not tell everybody um, that it's it's the main purpose of it is to get more collect more information on um, the different fisheries and the different fishing spots and what's coming out of those spots. Um, that's what makes it fishy to me because if it's so beneficial, then why aren't they posting it anywhere? Why are all the links two years old on the website? Um, Correct. Not, I agree with you 100%. Why is there no transparency if it's so beneficial? If it's so beneficial, if you probably did a thousand percent to all the people, if you get the people psyched on it, you know? Uh huh. So, and so, you know, like you said, it's kind of shady. I mean, it, it, it kind of, it's kind of weird, you know? Like, like, I have to agree with a lot of the other people commenting, you know, it could be a money grab. Yeah. It's very well it's a money grab. So is there any way we can go to appeal this or have a say on this? I think the best way would be to attend the meetings. Um, the, be the best way I'll go to appeal is to contact your your house of represent your represent your house representative. Mm -hmm. Write a letter. Write get a petition going to our, our house representative. Get it to stop this. You know or. I I know one of us out there listening in right now know knows the know how how to get this done. I, I don't know anything about politics, so but I'm sure we have somebody out there listening right now that knows how to get the ball rolling to appeal this. And if you're out there, please come in and chime in, you know, because we need somebody on the home team to write those letters, to get those letters in, you know, and to get that petition going, you know, so. We need we need people we need the people from the community out there to step up, man. Yeah, for you sure. Know? I think it I think it starts with us and ends with us as far as <laughs> as far as this goes. Um, that is a problem, but I believe there will be multiple opportunities to invoke our ideas. That's why I think these these meetings would be good. I wish they would have promoted it more. At least posted something. Um, maybe Ige. I don't know if he forgot his Twitter password again, but. He should, he should pull something about it, about the meetings. <laughs> so I I don't know. I think it would be good because, you know, with a lot of people there discussing stuff, it's not just going to be a screaming match the whole time. I, I'm sure they can come to better conclusions on how to deal with this. Like you said, like get rid of the illegal guys that are that are doing laying net and stuff or or what you're talking about earlier. Yeah, the per saying. The per saying, yeah. So – um that's definitely a thought and i'm sure other people have other good ideas so hopefully they're one open thing, to hearing about them in the meetings <laughs> yeah one thing for sure though i don't want to put anybody on blast but i don't really agree with how she's running the office right now is suzanne case uh-huh the head of dlnr the, the head of dlnr right yeah suzanne case head of dlnr in Oahu, and for the whole state you know, she was the very one that ignored Dean Morikawa's letter to not drop rat poison on Lehua Island. And she gave the go-ahead to it. Yeah. So I don't like her at all already. And she's part of this whole RPL. So we need to find someone in our community that knows how to stand up to people like her. Yeah. That has power and authority. We need to figure out how we're going to appeal this, petition this, or whatever, or how much what we got to do to put an end to this. Because 
you don't stop it before it starts. Once they get the ball rolling and it builds momentum, you're never stopping that ball from getting down there. Oh, never. for sure. So, you know, if anybody out there listening, if you're very knowledgeable of these kind of things and the, and the political aspects of it, please step forward, message one of us, let's get this, do this. You know, let's get this thing going. Let's put an end to this before it even starts. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody put, who else was today years old when they found out about this? <laughs> <laughs> that was me two days ago, I think. <laughs> As far as the meetings go, yeah. <laughs> so I was just when you met with the guy, it was just one on one, right? The guy from um, the D- DAR out in Kauai. Yes, actually, no. Um, actually, my friend Diane Debry, she put it together with put the meeting together, and uh, so that's Diane, if you ever hear this, um, my my good friend Brian Firm, he attended with me, and my other friend uh, Shayla Moon. She's the one that's extremely knowledgeable in all the politics of this, and she helped me understand a lot of what's going on and a lot of terminology and whatnot and how things work. So thanks, Shyla, for coming. Thank you, Don, for your time out, out of your, coming out of your way to come up and down to Colorado meet us, and I appreciate that too. So, Don, if you turn to this, much mahalo. Yeah. And thanks, Brian, and for your support too, you know. So, yeah, I mean, it was a good meeting, and it was a small meeting, which is not the it didn't turn into any kind of shouting match, you know. We listened to each other's opinions, we voiced their concerns, we addressed them. You know, a lot. Has, I learned. I learned quite a bit last night. You know, I kind of wrote everything down, but it's it's a lot of information to kind of really talk about. That For sure. Ago. Did any of it kind of change your opinion, or was was he open to like you talking about those people that are kept, that are scooping the uhus and the legal netting and stuff? I mean, I'm sure he's already aware of it. <clears throat> yeah, so I was all against this RPL, but he made some points about it, which I don't mind the research part as long as it doesn't implement any uh, repercussions on us. Uh-huh. But then it said, it's, he, he, but Don said that what they should do is forget about this RPL and implement the law. And he explained to me why and what if, what great effects would have, and it just made so much sense, and all the pros outweighed the cons on implementing a law. Uh-huh. It, it, yeah. And, uh, and that's nothing new. I mean, that, that's that been an issue um, since forever. As long as I've been diving, it's always been an issue about dealing on enforcing the law, and a big part of it is them being understaffed, but um, even then, I know, I know it's difficult, but and everybody's not fishing at the beach or diving at the beach at the same time, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, totally. And that's where, and I mean, that's done. If the, if the law is implemented to stop all commercial sale of reef fish, I told them what's going to happen is it'll create an ex, a black market for those fish. Uh-huh. And not only that, it will drive the prices and the values for that fish skyrocketing, you know? And I tell him, how do you stop that black market? And he, t- and he tells me, you know, you got to stop it. You have to report the illegal activity. We are the eyes and ears. We have to be the ones to call the NLR and say, hey, these guys are selling blue ooze over here. You know, hey, these guys are laying net over here. They're nesting in the in water for over 10 hours. Uh-huh. You know, we have to be the eyes and ears. We have to be the ones to make the call. So it goes so hand in hand, then, pretty much. Yeah, so dealing not cannot be everywhere at the same time. Uh-huh. So we have to be the community. We are out there all the time. If I'm not out there, maybe you're out there. If you're not out there, maybe your friend's out there. So we actually keep a watch on our ocean all the time. We just don't know it. Just because we don't know each other doesn't mean that we're not watching, you know? So Don made a good point. So if we were able to, you know, all come together to stop this black market activity, we will run the black market values out. We wouldn't have that problem anymore. We wouldn't have problems of people selling, uh, 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 commercially selling refit to people. By oh. first saying, you know, all that, you know, he's, the, the, that one law that he stated made a great point. And he's already wrote, uh, wrote up a draft. 
and he's going to try and get that passed on to the Senate and whatnot to speak. So he's on it. Don Peacock from the match on it. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I'm, I'm glad know. to know there's people that, you know, that are that are in it, that are willing to work with the people and at least, you know, educate educate us more and are willing to meet up with people like you to, um, you know, kind of kind of figure out what's going on instead of just trying to take it upon themselves and look it up where you can't really find the information anywhere. Yeah. Like Don, it's amazing because he's extremely passionate about what he does for a living. Yeah. And... Prior to our meeting, Don and I, we never met. We never knew each other. My friend set up this meeting, Diane, she set up this meeting, and he was more than happy to get out of his way to meet me and talk story. Uh -huh. You know, so that, like, made me feel so good that he's just passionate as I am. So I think if we were to communicate with our DAR uh, representatives on each island, Go to their office, talk to her, make an appointment, and say, hey, you know, what can we do? You know, I'm sure we can build up a great community to the point where, you know, we can regulate and sustain ourselves like the Hawaiians did hundreds of years ago, you know. I mean, put either the assistance from the state. And if the state did step in, we know it's for money. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> But yeah. anyway, yeah, it's, it's, I hope that we get a positive outlook from these meetings. For sure. At least, at least more of a structure, at least more of a step um, forward, because I'm definitely for, like, if there was more of a legitimate structure that we have in Hawaii, and it's, it's, it's already rough enough based on Hawaii's history, not only as a state in general and its relationship with, the rest of the country, it's you know, there's there's a lot more to it than just um, trying to trying to make enforce like fisheries and stuff like they can implement in other states, and I think that's yeah. what what they're running into. But for sure, like you mentioned, Alaska has a great um, fishing license system and and fishing game system, and I and they definitely make it a staple of of their whole state. And I feel like with Hawaii, everybody knows you know you can fish. You can dive over here, but we're not as renowned for it as a place like Alaska. And I don't think we'll ever get there anytime soon. You know what I mean? Without without having at least a structure instead of this kind of last minute, you know, throw it together kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. You know, it's sad that, you know, Hawaii is so different in bad ways. Yeah. We're so backwards and so behind on everything. I I honestly blame the politicians that are running their our state from decades ago. Yeah. Nothing was nothing was done or not I don't say nothing was done, but not enough was done. Yeah, man, it's sad. I I, 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 I think the, the big word is just kind of exploited, you know, like we've been exploited in, in so many ways. Um, as far as like, you know, like our real estate, our land and like everything it's, it's been exploited and, and to try to say like, oh, we're, we're trying to claim it now and, and justify why, when it just looks like a money grab, I think it's difficult. Um, someone's asking like how, if miners would have to get a permit, um, or a license, well, I don't think any of us, we don't know, really know any details yet. Right. Yeah. That's what I mean. You don't we don't know anything about what's going on. Nobody knows. It's, that's what makes it so shady and so untrustworthy. For sure. You know, so, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I mean, all in all, until that happens, until the day comes, if the do start it, we need to just take care of each other, educate each other, educate our youth, teach them the right way from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Don't teach them when they're adults because it's probably too late. You know how the saying goes: you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Yeah, it's you know us adults we stubborn. You know we don't like learn new things or or think that we're wrong. We get too much pride by that time. Uh -huh. we, we teach them when we teach the kids while they're young. We have to practice those good practices, practices all the way through life. 
For sure. So I do totally think agree. that's the best thing you can do. Promote ethical practices and everything we do. Awesome. So it's been about an hour. I don't think we have you have any other last minute questions. I mean, you've been like a super great help. I think everybody learned a lot. I definitely learned probably more 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 than the last couple of days, even trying to read that 140 something page. <laughs> That's crazy. I hate that so, Sure, Ethan, unrelated question. Go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, so, I mean, I'm. I, it sounds like a lot of, a lot of people that are in this stream are going to be going to the meetings. Um, oh, yeah, that's totally unrelated. I'll just message you about that. He's asking where do you get a gyotaku. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, yeah, I just mess. Um, other than that, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, it's been good talking to you. Um, he does a lot of conservation stuff related to, like, um, I know you just did, like, a youth um, kind of seminar. Um, yes, we actually have that plan on. Uh, unfortunately, we plan the youth seminar on December 1st, uh -huh. the same day as the meeting in Hawaii. Okay. But I've Brian and I are going to probably do the dive seminar, and I've got some other, other guys in my office. Uh, Long since Ohana, uh -huh. I've asked to go to the meeting and go find out what the scoops are. I you know I sent them the link, so they kind of know a, a big idea of what's going on. So when they go to that meeting on December first, they can come back and let me know what's going on. To me, the kids are more important anyway. I'm gonna, I'm not going to change the date for the kids. Or the kids, you know, I'm going to make sure the kids are taken care of first. So yeah, we have a youth seminar, you know. On December 1st, basically, we're going to be teaching kids ethical spear fishing practices. Where, where is it on Kauai? It's going to be at Kukulu uh, Boat Harbor. Okay. And, you know, I encourage, like, a lot of you guys out there to do the same. You know, you don't have to have a company to start a community event for free to take some kids out, teach them how to ethically spear fish or ethically fish, you know, teach them sustainable practices and, you know, also teach them the safety aspect or the risk management of, of things as well, you know? Uh-huh. Definitely. And that's something that, um, I mean, uh, maybe maybe sometime next year, me and you can work on something here on Oahu. Um, like Absolutely. For me personally, I didn't start diving, I don't think, till I was 17 years old and I didn't have anybody teach me, kind of learn from scratch and the like the main reason why i kept doing it is because i was able to, I, I learned like the more ethical way of doing it through diving with you know older like a lot of my friends i dive with they're all like 20 30 years older than me um and so that's that's where it's at you can't find it anywhere else unless you go through people like you yourself or if you're someone who does that for younger kids and i feel like that's the way it has to be um and that's way that's the way it's been for for centuries you know <laughs> no, yeah, just passed it on I don't know. I mean, to me, like education is great, but education sometimes has a, cannot trump experience. You know, uh -huh. a lot of times, you know, what you teach in school, you cannot learn unless you experience it for yourself. You know, and to me, experience is the best teacher. Like, even though you started late, you just going out there and sparkling and getting experience, self-taught. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, and that's great. Yeah. So that, that's an awesome way to learn too. For sure. And there wasn't any there wasn't any um, youth seminars like you're doing. So uh, for sure, if I was younger and I seen an opportunity like that, you know, that's why I think it, <laughs> I think it's really cool what you're doing. And um, that's something I want to do here on Oahu. So look forward to yeah. working with you in the future on that. Um, I don't think we have any other questions. I'm going to finish up the live stream. I wish someone would do that on Maui. I don't really know anybody on Maui. I'm sure Alan does. So, yeah, I mean, like, uh, I want to say, like, if anybody has any questions, like, I'm not an expert in anything, but I'd be more than happy to give you my opinion or kind of share my experience with you. Go ahead and message me through Instagram at Longfins, you know, and I'd be more than happy to talk story, you know. So, yeah, or contact Justin or, you know, we'll all get together, talk story, figure things out, you know, maybe come up with a plan. And like I said, if there's a politician that's out there or someone who's into politics out there that's listening tonight, please message us, you know, let's, let's start working on 
appealing this, you know, the cup forward as a community, just, just get this thing done. Uh huh. Yeah, for sure. Awesome, guys. I think that'll be it for the live stream. Go check him out. Alan at Long Fins. Um, I post a lot of good content. Um, yeah, like you said, feel free to ask him any questions. Um, he'll be more than willing to work with you. I think <clears throat> me and him went back and forth messaging. He's pretty quick to reply. So <laughs> if you guys have any questions, go ahead, message him. So I think that's it for the long for the live stream. You got anything else? I'm all good. Thank you for listening, guys. I appreciate the input and all the positive feedback. You guys are awesome. You know, long since would not be what it is today without you guys. So we love you guys. You know, if you follow long since, be part of our Ohana. And, you know, and thank you. I cannot, I cannot express how much thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. All right, guys, on that note, I'm going to conclude the live stream. See you guys in the next episode. Alrighty.